One of the challenges in this industry is to know enough about a subject that you think you're an expert, but not enough about a subject to know you don't know shit. There's like 60 videos on my channel and in almost all of them, I'm talking about how to make videos. Cameras, lenses, editing, tutorials. What I'm gonna do in this masterclass is teach you enough to get the result that you want, but not enough to explain why it worked. The goal here is to get you guys to make awesome videos, but skip all the boring stuff. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a dynamic 3D screen capture effect. I'm Kevin Mendoza, and this is my masterclass. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve's edit page, and the way you know that is because our edit tab is clicked down here on the bottom. In the timeline, we have our footage, which is a recording of my screen that I captured with OBS a little bit earlier. First thing we're gonna do is just trim this down a little bit. For this effect to work, we only need a few seconds worth. Once that's trimmed down, we're going to make sure it's clicked, and then down here, we're going to click Fusion. That opens up our Fusion page, where we're going to make this happen. Now, most tutorials would try to explain this shit beforehand and then take you through the process of building the effect. For myself, because I'm a visual learner, I like to see the process happen first, then hear the explanation afterwards to connect the dots. But don't worry, I am going to explain what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, but I'm just not going to explain why until the very end. So to make this dynamic 3D screen capture effect happen, we're going to need to bring in some nodes. We're going to come up to this toolbar and select Image Plane 3D. We're going to grab a 3D camera, and we're going to click Renderer 3D and bring it down as well. We're also going to bring in a 3D merge node so that way it merges everything together. To do that, we're going to hold shift, hit spacebar, and it's going to bring up this window where you could search what you're looking for. For us right now, it's already typed in, so we could select that and hit add. So to sum up, we just have our media in node, our image plane 3D, our camera 3D, renderer 3D, and merge 3D. So everything's in 3D. And then lastly, we have our media out. This is our output. This is the final image that everyone's going to see. Next, we're going to build up our pipeline so that way all of our nodes are in the proper place. So first, I'm just going to disconnect everything and then place the nodes where it makes sense for me to see them. All right, so this looks okay to me. Now to connect them all together. Now you notice in our second viewer, we don't see anything and it's supposed to be our media out. We know that because these two dots down here, this black and white dot down here, are corresponding to our first viewer and our second viewer, or our left viewer and our right viewer. Down here, our right viewer is highlighted for our media out, but we don't see anything. So we know that this node, what we're supposed to be seeing here, is supposed to come up here. The reason why that's not happening right now is because our 3D camera is way too close to our clip, which is in 3D space. And to view our 3D camera and our clip, in 3D space all at the same time, we're going to click this merge node and designate our first viewer to it. So making sure our node is selected, we're going to hit one. And here we see our 3D camera and our clip. And you can see that the 3D camera is way all up in there. What we wanna do is pull that back so that way we could see something in our media out. So let's click on our camera and we could use these colored arrows to move them within 3D space. So clicking on the blue and holding, we're gonna pull that back and there it appears in the media out. Just pull it back enough to fill the screen. There we go. And now that we're here, while our 3D camera is selected, all we're gonna do is keyframe the shit out of it at the times that we want on our timeline. This over here is our timeline. And this orange cursor, or this orange line, is our playhead. And let's say we want to set our first keyframe right here. 
And to set our first keyframe, we're gonna come up to our inspector. We're going to click transform for our 3D camera. And we see a bunch of different axes, axis, axes, axi. What's the plural of that? Whatever it is. X, Y, and Z. Translation is our 3D space. So the camera can move up, down, left, right. And if you grab the blue, forward and back, right? center this up again there and then our rotation is the direction that the camera is looking at so it's going to be looking up down or left and right or it's gonna roll let's just reset all of that now you could use these wheels to set the position of your camera for each keyframe but I personally like coming up here and using these tools. This move tab will have these colored arrows on the 3D camera to move it in your translation space. And then clicking here for rotation, these red, green, and blue circles will allow you to rotate the camera in your rotation space. So to set our first keyframe, we're just going to click all this because we are going to be moving it in 3D space and we are going to be rotating it as well. And that sets our first keyframe, and we know that because if we move this orange playhead to the side, we see a white line right there. That's our keyframe. We'll set another one, let some time pass by, maybe around here. We'll set another keyframe. Now we don't have to come back here to the inspector to set another keyframe. We could just move the camera and the keyframe will be set for us. So let's zoom in, right? Let's maybe... Zoom in a little bit more. Let's move right. Let's rotate. I'll grab the green, rotate action. And that'll be our second keyframe. And we could bring our playhead to the first keyframe, play it, and you see what you just did. All right, let's set some more keyframes. Let's go maybe here. And let's move the camera even more inward. Let's move it down. And let's have it tilt up. So let's grab the red and tilt it up. Let's see how that looks. Pretty cool. And let's go one more. Let's go here. Let's pull it back just a little bit. We'll go, let's go right, sorry, left this time. Let's go, let's tilt it this way. Let us, uh, let's see, tilt it up. You know what, let's go all the way left and let's go down. And let's see how that looks. I'll come back to the first keyframe, hit spacebar. Ooh, whoa, pretty cool. All right. Now we see this red line. That's our path of the 3D camera. And you see how from the first keyframe to the second and so forth, there's these hard corners. We really want to smooth those out just so it looks like the camera's floating through space. To do that, we're going to go to our spline. Uh, there we go. Let's bring this out a little bit. And we'll click this so that way we see all keyframes and all points of axes, axi. I really don't know what the plural form of that word is. So if everyone knows, or if anyone knows, let me know in the comments below. And all we're trying to do is find our, our movement. So this looks like everything. Okay, so within the spline, you see all of our keyframes and how harshly those corners are happening, right? Now we could smooth all of that out by highlighting everything, right clicking on one of the points and just hit smooth. So now you see all these curves going, everything got smoother and even in the camera trajectory, you see how smooth its path has gotten. That's what we want. So let's come back here to our first keyframe, play that out. Whoa, and look how smooth that is. And that's all there is to it. Let's just close this spline and let's recap what we did. 
So the first thing we did was put our clip inside 3D space. Then we took both of them and merged them together so that way our 3D camera could view it. Now since this 3D merge node has our clip inside 3D space and a camera all together, all we're doing is rendering all that so that way we could see it. Now these connectors of our pipeline are kind of important. You'll see different triangles of different colors and some squares. And those connection points are telling the node how to interpret whatever's connected to it. The connection points we use today are the gray square. If I disconnect that, it's gray. The green triangle and the yellow triangle. The gray square is that node's output. And we're putting it in to the 3D space's input. And we're taking that output and putting it into the input of our 3D merge. The difference between green and yellow as inputs is the green is the foreground and the yellow is the background. So our clip inside 3D space is behind our 3D camera. So that's why our 3D camera is in green. Then we take that output, put it into our 3D renderer. So that way our media out could interpret everything and we see the final product.